Ministry of Health wants all secondary school students vaccinated. Drunk driver arrested after crashing into tree. Government to build more drainage sluices. And small budget forces police force to dispose of bodies before they are identified. I am Laurie Cobalt for, and welcome to tonight's edition of Uncut News. Before we begin, tonight I want to know where you are watching from. Tell us in the comments. Just days before the reopening of schools in September, the Ministry of Health is recommending that all students 12 and up be fully vaccinated against the Rona before classes start. This recommendation is for students both public and private. While the Ministry has said that it will get enough vaccines for the children, they still have yet to indicate an arrival date for said shots. Additionally, the Ministry also warns other measures including the wearing of masks and physical distancing to be implemented in schools. This morning it was announced that CGX Energy has spotted the Kawa 1 exploration well offshore Guyana. CGX Energy said that they expect the Kawa 1 well to reach a total depth in the first half of December 2021. The Kawa 1 well is located in the northeast quadrant of the quarantine block, approximately 200 kilometers offshore from Georgetown. The water depth is approximately 355 meters, and the expected total depth of the well is 6,685 meters. The family of Ricardo Fagundes, aka Paper Shorts, are still demanding justice for their slain loved one, over five months after he was gone down outside of Palm Court. Close to about three dozen persons, including his mother, Carol Fagundes, and a group of his friends staged a peaceful protest outside of the Palm Court nightclub last evening. They lamented that all this time had passed since his murder, and to date, no charges have been laid. DDL and the LR Group of Israel are currently undertaking a feasibility study for the establishment of a dairy farming operation in Guyana. DDL is currently testing the production of reconstituted milk, that is, powdered milk plus water. The study, however, is to determine the feasibility of transitioning to the use of fresh cow's milk. A technical team from Israel will visit early next year to make recommendations on land selection and the operation structure. The feasibility study is scheduled for completion in early 2022. Now, some of you older folks out there and students of history may have remembered that the community of Dairy on the West Bank actually used to be home to a dairy farm, hence the name. Are you one of the chosen few that benefits from duty free? If yes, then check out these amazing vehicles that just arrived at Best Buy Auto Sales. This 2016 Toyota Harrier Grand Sport Edition, this 2014 Range Rover Evoque, and this 2016 Lexus RX 200T are all on sale. They are all fully loaded and come with all modern features. Call the WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info or visit their showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Rose Street, Queenstown or Lot 2 Lower Street and tell them the Rico sent you to get in on a sweet deal. Over in Mabaruma, Region 1, 37-year-old disorderly drunken mess Mitchell Dibedin was arrested on Sunday after crashing his Toyota wagon into a tree on the Woodnina Public Road. His passenger, 54-year-old Edgar Adams, received head injuries as a result of the collision. The police were summoned to the scene, and Adams was taken to the hospital where his condition is listed as stable. Dibdeen remains in police custody. The government plans to build two eight-door outfall sluices to mitigate flooding in Regions 3 and 6. This is one of the long-term solutions the government will be investing in to prevent flooding. They are currently studying the two best locations to build the sluices and the accompanying canals. When the major sluices are completed, the lands will be drained more efficiently, preserving the agriculture sector, hopefully, which is usually severely affected by such floods. The outfall sluices will resemble the Hope Canal project on the East Coast, or, uh, you know, if you need a frame of reference, I guess. Today, four persons were charged for the murder of a 24-year-old Keon McPherson. Nicholas Hercules, Brianna Nurse, Devon Henry, and Peter Lamb were charged in connection with the murder committed on McPherson on August 15th of this year. It was reported by other media houses that McPherson was said to be part of a triangular love affair. It is believed that Nurse, as the man's mother-in-law, set him up to be murdered. Nevertheless, the quartet were remanded to prison until September 17th. It's now time for today's runner report. 
Today, the nation recorded 36 new cases. There are now 597 persons dead, 19 in the ICU, 1,247 in home isolation, and the total number of confirmed cases around the nation now stands at 24,372. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds, and remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Don't miss the grand 50% off sale and get a free one-month digital prime bundle plan. Available at City Mall, Starbrook Square, Regent and Light Street, Massey Turkine, and Massey Provident. Shop early, limited stocks available. Fuel starvation is suspected to be the main contributor to last Saturday's crash landing of Roraima Airways' Britain Norman Trilander near the Eccles dump site. This is according to preliminary investigations by the Civil Aviation Authority. Additionally, an investigator has been assigned to conduct an independent investigation. Fuel starvation in this context is the failure of the fuel system of the plane to supply adequate fuel to the engine to run properly. This can be caused by a blockage, a malfunction of the pump, or a vapor lock, leading to a loss of power or engine stoppage. And over in the region, at least one person died and five more are missing after a fire erupted on an offshore platform in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Three workers of the Mexican state-owned oil company, Pemex, were injured and another was in a state of nervous shock. Three workers of a contracting firm were injured and three more were missing, and another two from another firm were also reported as missing. Pemex said it would investigate what caused the blaze at the EKU A2 platform at the Ku Malub Zap oil field in the Bay of Campeche, which was brought under control on Sunday afternoon. You'll have to forgive me if I ruined any of those names just now. Oh yeah, and by the way, not so fun fact. It was recently reported that if a similar incident were to happen to us, excellent emergency plan was not sufficient to save our delicate ecosystem from possible damage. Depressing, I know. Known to something that's just as depressing. It's now time for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? According to Kaiju News, the police force is moving to dispose of unidentified bodies as quickly as possible, just to cut costs. This revelation came to light following a post-mortem examination conducted on an unidentified accident victim last Wednesday. Apparently, they are seeking the public's help to identify the remains as soon as possible, because if no one comes forward within two weeks, the state will bury the man's body in an unmarked grave following a court approval. Well, some smart reporter at Keicher found this as odd, seeing as unidentified bodies could remain stored for weeks, months, a few years even before an autopsy is done, or that they are disposed of. This is especially true for victims of violent crimes, as their bodies are, well, they're basically a form of evidence in the case. And last time I checked, a fatal hit and run is still a violent crime. So, it'll probably be a good idea to keep their body around until it's identified, at least. But, when asked why the GPF is in such a hurry to put this corpse six feet under, their public relations head, Stan Gavaya, explained that to store a body, it costs money. The longer the body remains stored, the costs keep going up, while adding that it's proving to be a financial burden to the GPF. However, I find it interesting that the whole thing only became a financial burden after they ended their contract with Lycan Funeral Home. So at this point, it sounds like not only the GPF does not want to pay Lycan to continue to store the bodies, but they don't even want to pay for storing dead bodies, period. It troubles me that I'm seeing a trend that from Georgetown Public to New Amsterdam Hospital, now to the GPF, it seems like the state really has no interest in preserving anyone's remains after they die, even if they are the ones legally vested with custody of said remains. Now, I will admit to you, I'm no forensics detective. I'm a news-reading cartoon. But even I could tell you that something doesn't add up here. I have several reasons why the state's disinterest in not budgeting enough money to store dead bodies should disturb you to your core. 
but I don't want to go into too much detail and get us demonetized. So, I think we can all agree that rushing to bury the bodies of unidentified crime victims because you're scared of a big electricity bill to store them is pretty stupid. You there, Mr. Truckona. A great place to get high-quality truck parts and engine spares for low prices is Powered Automotive. They stock parts for Dolph, Freightliner, Mark, International, and all models of Cummins engines. Visit them at Lot 1161 EE Eccles or call them on 697-0171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Guyana. Realty. Moving on to Uncut News News Poll Question of the Day. Every day we pose a question about current events in the nation, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Friday's question was, Cuba is restarting its private sector. Do you think it will have any effects on the regional economy or politics? King Tut says, it would be a great start for Cuba and a great opportunity for Guyana and the region. I agree. Jay Jiram says, yes, the Cuban private sector will have an impact on the region. And Sean D'Souza, well, his, he didn't answer the question, but I just wanted to read this one. Sean D'Souza says, do you have to take the vaccine to come home to Guyana? Yes, Sean, you must have at least one shot before you get on the plane. At least from the last that I've heard. If you've heard anything different, please let me know. So for tonight's question. Well, y you know what, before we go into that, honestly, tonight's episode was kind of dark. I mean, really, it was really dark. So I want to end on a good note. For tonight's question, I want to know, what do you like about Uncut News? Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bullford saying goodnight, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here. Or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!